What's up Simonics? Welcome to my essential Ionic image zooming guide. Because in the past I noticed that you got a lot of questions about image zooming by email or uh, comments under other videos and today we want to do two things. First we want to update a little uh, old video that we did on uh, image preview model with zoom functionalities from code and as well a new functionality to zoom into cards basically like you can see on the Instagram app. You can scroll into them, uh, zoom into them right in, uh, in your feed. Um, they pop up, the background goes a bit too dark. It was a bit tricky, but we can do it together. The good news for today is we only need a blank new project and one additional page, which we will use for our model presentation. Besides that, uh, we need a few images. So I just put a folder image into the assets folder and I just copied a few of the uh, course images from the Ionic Academy. So with that in place, we can get started first of all with a little slide presentation like a carousel, I would say. So therefore we can use the Ion slides. Okay, now you know I'm from Germany once again. Uh, I should maybe disable this, but actually I don't really care. Um, to the Ion slides, you can pass options. And these options are really important if you want to customize the appearance of slides. You can also do this a bit with CSS. So we will also give it a class uh, preview slides. But usually the better way to customize the core functionality of slides is through the options, which are basically the options from the dangerous IO swiper uh, thingy. So let me just quickly show you uh, why. Because if you go to the Ion slides, uh, yeah, I really don't use the search in here a lot. Well, let's do this. Uh, if you go here, you will directly get uh, forwarded to the swiper. And basically, if you check out the properties, um, they already link you to the swiper API. And from here, somewhere you can find all the parameters that you can use. And these are the things that we can inject into our slides. So um, in the background, I will actually also run the live reload. And because I use capacitor, you can simply run an ionic build and then do npx cap at iOS or Android, whatever you prefer. But I got my iOS device connected. So I will go ahead with ionic cap run iOS live reload external. That will bring up a nice preview on my device. And I think we can also get a web preview. So back to our slides and the settings. Within the Ion slides, you then got Ion slide elements, and these are essentially um, the real slides within. Um, I will do it a bit dirty maybe today. I just want to iterate my images because they are named one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then we will add the image right in here uh, using the path assets image then uh, calculating the value using angular we could also have brackets here and do it different that's just uh, i think that this one is actually a bit easier um, and on click we want to open a preview of the image that's the whole idea uh, i think did i close it yeah but i should be good with localhost let's try uh, very good. Uh, cannot find whatever. Um, um, maybe because I don't have any options defined yet. <laughs> so let's quickly add some slider options by default. I'm not sure if that was actually the problem. Let image maybe off. That could also make a huge difference. So now we should see my image slides. They are covering the whole screen, um, can work, but usually that's not what you want to see. So within the slider options, we can now change everything based on the swiper API. For example, you can disable zoom. I think it's actually automatically disabled. You can change slides per view to uh, make multiple uh, slides appear on one screen. You can add space between, and I also use centered slides. And as a result, we got this nice little carousel, which will center images. I could also change this offset uh, to start at the beginning, but I think that's quite fine so far. Um, 
Now to the open preview. Once we click one, we want to open the modal in which we can zoom. Um, so therefore, we will use the modal controller. Let's inject it. Private modal controller, modal controller. And then we can call modal controller, create, and pass in a few information. So as a component, of course, we want to use the page that we generated in the beginning, which was called um, um, image model page, right? Um, then we want to pass in component properties because we've clicked on an image. And of course, we want to pass this to our new component. And then we might also um, use a custom CSS class. Um, Let's call this one transparent model. There we go. Um, just a quick note, this is actually just the short form for writing this. So if you're cool, just do it like this. Um, also, if you're cool, you could do this in an async fashion. So let's do this, await, and then modal.present. There we go. All right, we are presenting our model on click, which should hopefully work. Yeah, there we go. Uh, empty model looks really great. Now, I also wanted to quickly uh, add a bit of CSS for our preview slides, just with a bit of margin background and around the image some padding, just to show that we can customize both the slider with the options and also from CSS. So it's really up to you to make this look like um, what you want from it. Now the modal page gets a bit more interesting. Let's go to our image model and perhaps we start with this file because we need to define um, an input. And actually we could also um, make this a bit different. Let's do this. Uh, we could also use the ionic nav params to get the value that we send with the component properties, but actually using the annotation for input looks a bit cooler i think so let's roll with that i'll also bring up a dummy um, slider configuration once again i will just set zoom to true um, if we check out the api for zoom isn't this yeah uh, we see that we can actually um, pass in an object like this and customize uh, different settings or we can just pass in true um, uh, which will use the default values for max ratio min ratio and all of that now we are inside our image model and we got the image. So let's move into the image model page. Uh, I will bring in the content because it's quite the same like before. Uh, you don't wanna have a uh, toolbar at the top because when you open the model, um, yeah, you don't wanna have it. But we will still use the slides because within the slides, we can then use the swiper zoom container, which is enough to tell Ionic or uh, more precisely the swiper that this area can be zoomed. And within, we will simply put the image. Once again, this is just the number in our case. Uh, perhaps you pass the whole path to a remote image or anything like this would work the same. So now when we open it, we see that we got the image and I can actually with a double click already zoom. Uh, I can't really zoom with anything else, but at least <laughs> this part already works. But it's not really looking like a nice overlay for a modal image. We want to have a transparent background. Um, so we go into our image modal page as CSS and we put in a bit of CSS. So we want to make the content transparent and we will actually also have an ion footer element in a second. But for now, let's uh, do this. And actually, I don't know why I use anything else because that looks already pretty good to me. <laughs> hmm. Well, yeah, that's what you get when you make the background of your model transparent. Now we don't get any close buttons and we can't really access this from code. So let's also change that. So within that page, I have just uh, created a little snippet for you, which uh, is added below the content. So it's at the bottom. In the previous version, we had this at the top, but I think it's actually better at the bottom. A simple row with four columns. Each column uh, has one button, this one called zoom with faults. 
this one calls zoom with true and this one just calls close. The rest is really just a bit of styling icon and the name, uh, nothing special. So that means within our zoom function, we will be able to zoom in or out of our image, hopefully. Uh, so let's do this. Um, actually, we'll make this as as well. Zoom in Boolean. And then we need to access our slides element because from our slides element, we get access to the swiper. And therefore we can uh, access it as a view child. Uh, all imports here, view child and also the ion slides component. So we get some nice typing. With that in place, we can now finally get our um, zoom and we can get this. Oh, actually, let's get the slider first. And therefore we call await this dot slides get swiper. Uh, actually, let's take a look. Um, get the swiper instance. Use this to access the full swiper API. We could also do this without the Azure stuff, but I think it's a bit cleaner like this. And to access the zoom, you can simply call slider.zoom. This information basically comes from checking out the uh, swiper stuff on here. Uh, you will see how they implemented uh, it themselves. And once we got the zoom, it's actually quite easy. We can check, do we want to zoom in? In that case, call zoom in. In the other case, call zoom out. Another cool short form saving you about four lines of code. So that means we should be able to zoom in and out now. Let's see, it's not working. And I had this problem uh, or I noticed this problem with our previous implementation and the fix is kind of strange, but it works. On ion view did enter you call slides update one time and as a result, it just works. I'm not sure what's going on in the background, um, but this completely fixes the issue of uh, not being able to use the swiper zoom from code. So we got a nice preview. We can zoom in or out. Uh, let's quickly also attach the functionality to close the modal. Uh, injected private modal controller, modal controller. And then we're already able to use our modal completely as we expected. Zoom in, zoom out, close. Um, at the same time, I might be able to show you the preview. Let me quickly deploy it to my device. And I also wanted to show you uh, how to attach the class that we used for the modal because we added a custom class that you can actually find when you check out the code and uh, transparent modal is the custom class that we used within our homepage once we created it. And if you want to use this class, you have to put the CSS rules at the top of your application uh, where I actually already got them. So that's why it's looking so good. Uh, let's quickly remove them and check it out how it normally looks. Now it makes sense. This is the default you get with the styling that we have in place and by making our modal wrapper background uh, slightly a bit transparent with the dark color. We actually got the result that we see right here. Uh, I was really impressed that it works automatically. <laughs> so, um, not sure what I thought. All right, that means uh, we're fine. Let's quickly also check it out on a device. Uh, there we go. Ionic image zoom. I can go through the slides, I can open whatever I want, and now I can, with my fingers, zoom in nicely on a device. I can also zoom in, zoom out, do a bit more of zooming, and there we go. That's it so far for our image gallery with zoom. I think this is already a pretty important feature for a lot of applications, so hopefully this part already helps you. But I wanted to take things another step forward. If you check out Instagram or maybe it's on Twitter as well, you can from your feed zoom into any kind of image and sometimes that is pretty cool. So therefore, let's go back to our homepage. I will deactivate our previous function because we don't really need this um, now anymore. And we will go back to creating an ion card based on our array of images. 
It will have a custom class and we also got a little reference because we need to access each and every card in the end. Now we can follow up with slides once again. Um, so it doesn't really matter that we are right inside a card. We can still use the ion slides to implement the zoom functionality. We could just continue here with ion card content, um, just like we're used to, almost like Instagram. And now within the ion slide, we can once again use our div class swiper zoom container to make our images within zoomable but I'll show you why this isn't as easy as you might think. So first of all, it looks like a cool list of ion cards. Actually, we should now finally take a look at this on a device because I can't really zoom in my browser. So what I can do now is I can actually zoom into the image. <laughs> looks uh, interesting. But the problem is that the image isn't getting bigger and I wanted to cover the whole screen and get out of the cart, which is mm, a bit more challenging. The problem is that right now the carts contain um, these slides and the images. And to change this, we want to make the image slide and image card overflow visible. Actually, let's do a little live thingy right here. So with that in place, the card uh, or the image already leaves the card. That's a good start. But you can also see at the bottom, this card is actually above that card. Um, and that's not really cool. And we wanted to have a dark background. So first of all, I want to give the um, each and every image card uh, the same index. And on focus, we want to give it a different index. Um, we will see how to attach this. I'm um, not sure if this actually solves the first problem. Uh, no, not yet. So I went into all of this to uh, find out how we can achieve something like this. And the answer is that we first of all define two variables uh, to check if the zoom is currently active and to get the zoom scale, which we can get. Um, now it becomes really interesting because we're going to create a custom uh, object of um, slider values. We will use this just like the first one. Um, now I want to disallow sliding to the sides because that looks really odd. And I want to give it the zoom ratio of 5 so I can later more easily calculate um, the zoom scale, which we will need for the opacity. You see, it becomes a bit more complex. And now what's interesting, you can actually listen to events of the swiper. So on zoom change, um, which returns the scale and image element, um, stuff we don't really need, but I will just show it in here so you know what's going on. Within here, we get notified about the zoom change. So if we start to zoom, we could set our zoom active first of all to true. Uh, then we can also set our zoom scale to scale divided by five because the maximum zoom scale ratio is currently five. If we divide it by five, we get a nice value between zero and one, which we can use for the opacity of the background that we want to slightly fade in and out once we get the image up. And to make all of this work, I also had to inject the private change detector ref um, and then call this dot change detector uh, detect changes. That's like doing a set timeout or telling Angular to please update the view. Right now, this isn't really changing a lot in our application because we also haven't uh, added the backdrop and the index is still a bit wrong. Now, the problem is that we need a way to um, know when a certain card is touched or when the um, zoom ended. Because if I end the zoom now, it stays like this. And of course, I want to make it back to the small element. So this part is actually or was uh, the most tricky to figure out. But it turns out on our swiper zoom container, you can simply add touch start 
and then call your own touch start functionality and we will pass the current card reference to this functionality because then we can assign a custom class and make that one card uh, have a higher index and be above the rest of the application. And of course, if we can have a touch start, we can also have the touch end event. And within the touch end event, we will call touch end and we will pass not only the card, but also the slides element. Why? Well, in the touch end case, which is like we have zoomed and we leave our fingers, we want to zoom back and therefore we need to access the slides like we did in the previous gallery. So we can call zoom out and the card will zoom back or the slides will zoom back. So that's the theory behind this. Now with that in place, we need our touch start touch. Don't make any mistake now, Simon. It's a critical phase. Uh, touch and this is the zoom slides. This is actually an ion slides element. You can give it the type if you want to. And also the card. I don't want to use ion card in here. Um, so let's keep it like this. So when we touch start, we will give our card element style uh, index of um, let's give it 11. So we will do this, um, yeah, usually it has a nine. We want to make the backdrop to index 10 and the zoom card will have the uh, index elf. Actually, I think we don't need uh, the zoom focus class anymore. Let me just quickly cook, look it up. Yep, that's not needed anymore. So when we start our touches, the card gets a higher index and is above everything else. Cool. That's a little win already for our final animation. Now on touch end, as I said, we want to get back to the previous state and we can do this uh, just like before. So let's make this async and access it from our slides, get swiper, get the zoom and call zoom out. At the same time, we also want to call zoom active false. And we also want to set our card index back to the previous nine. And finally, we should also, I think we should also um, update the view because um, especially the zoom active um, changes weren't really working for me. So now I can zoom out. I can let go of the touch and the card swipes back into place and I can zoom into every of my cards. I, I really like this. Okay, now only the background is missing. There is actually an ion backdrop component, but uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't really make it work and I thought, well, just add a little element yourself. And there we go. Just add a div element ng if uh, zoom active. So it will only be shown when we start the zoom and it will um, be removed if we end the zoom. Let's give it the class backdrop. So it's kind of a backdrop fake. And let's end it here for now. So the backdrop is now interesting. Um, that wasn't my attention. Okay because for the backdrop, we now need to use the right index and that should be 10. This means if it's active, it's above the other cards, which have nine and below the current focus card, which has 11. So a little trick here. Um, it also needs <clears throat> position absolute. I will use the um, background. I will just background, just background, please. Uh, black. Um, and there's a little something I need to tell you, but I will tell you in a second. Um, actually, we need a height of 100 to make it appear. So it's hidden. Uh, once the uh, zoom active becomes active, it will be shown. And you see, we only see our own card. We can do all of this and then it is removed. Of course, this doesn't really make sense. And that's the place where our zoom scale comes into place. Zoom scale is a value between zero and one, as I said in the beginning. <clears throat> and therefore we can um, simply use 
style.opacity right in here and set it to zoom scale. So the opacity is now something between zero and one depending on how far we zoom into the card. So if we start, it's just a little gray and it gets darker once we uh, zoom more into this. Um, I would really love to tell you how, how proud I am about figuring this out. I think it's just a small thing, but making everything work together feels really good and feels like you can still do everything with Ionic that you want to do. And I could do this now for the next 10 minutes, but let's leave it like it is. There are two things I need to tell you that I didn't really like. First one is, let's go to a card at the bottom of our list, <laughs> you will see that the backdrop actually starts uh, stops here. Because we've given it a position absolute and a height of 100, it doesn't cover the screen once we scroll down. So if I give it 200, I have removed that error, um, so we might need a better way to figure out the height of the backdrop element. I think we could easily do this by getting the real content height of the ion content and then setting the height from code. That should also work. That is number one. The second thing I wasn't super happy about is that uh, right now the opacity changes nicely, but once you let go, it instantly goes back to opacity of zero. I tried to use uh, Angular animations uh, for the ng if, Perhaps this would kind of work with the hidden, um, yeah, and it's some kind of angular animation, but I couldn't make it work and I found it also to be a bit over the top for this tutorial because in 90% of the cases, this is already pretty nice and all that you need. So I really hope you enjoyed our uh, essential episode on image zoom. Uh, you've seen how to use the model with a nice presentation of a transparent model and zooming in that model or our second view, which is a bit more complicated, but still works pretty nicely. And it looks like the Instagram application. So no one will be able to tell that your application is an Ionic hybrid application. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you got any questions, as always, let me know. And if you got any requests for new content, you can also leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.